I'm Kat and today we're going to talk about all my favorites of 2020. I think generally we can agree 2020 was not the best and I found that to be the case not only with the world but also with the things that I consumed this year be it movies, TV shows, books. I love movies so much but for some reason I was not in the mood and the right mindset for them so I watched very very few this year and TV shows on the other hand I have grown to love more let's start with my favorite movies this year 2020 I ended up watching 25 movies which I am very happy with that number because especially at the end of the year I watched nothing so out of those my favorites were marriage story which is hmm so old at this point but I remember really really enjoying the dynamic how it explored the relationship and because I've seen it so long ago I don't really have it that fresh in my mind but I remember really appreciating the commentary it had then I watched Little Women which I loved it was the most wholesome story about family and sisters and it was it was such a warming tale that then prompted me to read the book so I really appreciated that movie as well so so beautiful and finally the last favorite movie was Frozen 2 because I also watched that at the beginning of the year really really loved it I was not the biggest hugest fan of Frozen I enjoyed it but of those new movies Tangled is my favorite, will always be my favorite, but I really loved Frozen 2. It was unexpected, I wasn't counting on it turning so dark all of a sudden. I really appreciated the message as well. The animation obviously is beautiful and the songs are really cute as well. So yeah, moving on to TV shows and I watched 25 TV shows as well. I'm not counting seasons, I'm counting like different titles. And for those, I have four new favorites. The first one is How to Get Away with Murder. I discovered this series this year. I love it so, so much. Annalise Keating is one of my new favorite characters in storytelling in general. I love her so much. Viola Davis is an incredible actress and I love her. I love what she does with this character. I love the story. Everything, the way everything happens. It is really over the top dramatic, but it's so addicting and I love it. I love it. I still haven't finished it, but I'm I'm on my way. Then I watched You. I think I, I only watched the second season this year. I loved it. I love it. I especially love it more now after finishing Gossip Girl. I love how it plays with our expectations. I love the characters, how messed up a little bit they are. Absolutely loved it. This show is one of those that you need to binge. Once you start it, you can't stop watching it. And I love it. I absolutely love you. Hmm. Then I watched Sex Education, another one of my favorite, favorite shows. I love it so much. The characters do it so well for me. I love them all so much. I adore the way the show is written, the little problems that it tackles, the way that these characters are portrayed. It's one of those shows that I can see making it through the ages and generally be considered great TV because it is. If you haven't seen it, highly, highly recommend that you do because it's wonderful. Finally, the last TV show that I watched and that I loved this year that I think it's worth mentioning is Dirty Money because this year for me was the time, the whole year, that I found my love of documentaries, docu-series as well, non-fiction books. 2020 was really the year for that for me delving deeper into our world and not a fictionalized version of it and dirty money was a wonderful way to dip my toes 
in those waters. I love the way it talks about so many different issues and introduces us to different problems so that we can investigate further on our own. I love it. I have seen both seasons so far. I'm hoping that we have more seasons in the future because this format really works for me. And finally, we get to the books, all of my favorites of the year. Just a quick thing, in 2020, I managed to read 133 books, which makes me really happy. I never set, I'm going to put this down, um, I never really set reading goals for myself. I think I said this before, I'm much more of a mood reader and the thing of having a number doesn't really work for me. I don't love that pressure. So let's start talking about all of them. I order them by months, the month that I read them in. So we start in January and end all the way in December because it just made sense for me. And let's start with one of the first books that I read in 2020, which became an instant favorite, and that is The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. Everybody raves about this book, everybody loves it. It was a wonderful way to start the year. If you don't know, this tells the story of Natasha, a young girl who lives in the United States, but who is being deported to Jamaica, her along with her family. And this book takes place in one day. So in that last day in the United States, she is trying to kind of save her family from that future. Along with that, we also have the story of Daniel, who is a young man also trying to figure out his life, dealing with his parents' expectations of him, what he should be. And obviously, if you've read any Nicola Yoon, you know that she loves love, and this book focuses a lot on, on that. These two characters meeting, and in one day just making this incredible connection and if you think it sounds cheesy don't because this book it's it's so much more than the romance and the way that these characters connect is so wonderful so real and that's why it's on my favorites insta love is one of the most unrealistic things that being said nicola yoon is very much a fan of insta love because she herself kind of lived that experience. So the way that she manages to portray that in her books is it makes it look real and believable. And I absolutely love this book. Then, on a completely, completely different note, I read, discovered, and fell in love with Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. Now, I've mentioned this book a lot because it was such a revelation. Now, once again, Jay Kristoff is super well known for his books. He has written a ton of things, but for some reason, I always feel like Nevernight is a bit underrated. This is adult fantasy. It won't be to everybody's taste, but it was so up my alley. I love it so much. This tells the story of Mia Corvair, a young girl who was kind of after revenge for something that happened to her um, very early on in her life. And the way to do that, she has kind of a list of little steps that she needs to take. One of those being getting accepted into a school of assassins so she can train and get her revenge. And this first book is that adventure. We kind of get to know her a little bit, her past, what is her motivation in life, generally speaking. And we see her in that school of assassins. The writing is just the perfect amount of sarcastic, <laughs> which I love so much. I love Mia, I love her journey. And out of the trilogy, this is definitely my favorite. So I can't recommend this enough. The whole trilogy is incredible, but this book in particular really, really spoke to me. Then I read where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. And this is one of those books that I definitely picked up because of the hype. It's one of those that for months and months and months, everybody was reading and everybody was loving. And reading the back, it didn't grab my attention. Then on a whim, I was like, okay, sure. I, I don't remember who recommended it, but it was somebody who I trusted and I was like, okay, yeah, let's let's give this a try. 
and I did and I loved it. It was so unexpected too because some of the elements had everything going against them and for some reason the way the story was told it was such a slow paced slow burn story that it just it worked it worked for me i can't explain it that being said recently i read some mixed reviews about it and i know that the way that black people are portrayed in this book is problematic so i i didn't know that going into it but knowing what i know now i obviously recognize that and it doesn't feel right to be raving about this book knowing that now so go if you are in any way interested in reading this book go into it knowing that that the way that black people are portrayed is unrealistic problematic plays into stereotypes that are in no way realistic and can be harmful it's one of those that i feel conflicted about including it here but I also felt the need to recognize it for what it is. So then I have a post-it note <laughs> so I don't forget to mention Lore Olympus. I discovered Lore Olympus in April, if I'm not mistaken, and it was the best thing I could have discovered this year. One of the best. <laughs> I remember Katie Tastic mentioning this web series. So whenever she mentioned that and the way she described Lore Olympus, Greek mythology with a modern twist. The illustrations are beautiful to die for. Uh, Hades and Persephone retelling story. Lovely romance. I was sold. I read it. I think I read all of it in a couple of days. And up until this point, I'm all caught up. I love, 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 love Laura Olympus. I've said this before. If ever the author, Rachel Smythe, decides to publish it in a book, I am 100% here for that because I just love it with everything I've got. I love the illustration. I love the storytelling. I love the characters. It's ev everything is perfect. And on the one hand, I don't want it to end. But at the same time, I'm like, when, when do we get to, to them being together? And it's perfect because it's slow burn. You see Hades and Persephone's relationship evolve. And I love it. It's definitely one of my favorites of the year. If you haven't read it already, I will leave the link down below in the description box so you can go and discover it because it's it's... It's wonderful, I love it with all my heart, and especially if you love Greek mythology, this is going to be it for you. Then, I got a new release by the Queen Sarah J Maas, and that is Crescent City House of Earth and Blood. I'm just so excited to have another new series to get into and to just give me all the feels. I'm. I'm so happy. So this is a bit weird to explain because this is fantasy. We follow Bryce, who is our main character. She is a young woman and she has a best friend who ends up being murdered. And this whole book is kind of the journey of Bryce figuring out what happened to her best friend. And not only that, but she has to deal with a ton of other different things that happened in her world. We have a lot, I think, all the magical creatures you can imagine. We have angels, we have demons, we have fairies, we have vampires. We, every magical being that you can imagine, it's here. And I have to say that the first maybe 100 pages took me a while to read because I mean, you're setting up a whole new world with politics, with new creatures, with everything. So as most high fantasy books tend to do, it takes a little bit to get into. But then it was smooth sailing and I love this book so, so, so much. After that, I discovered a new favorite book. This one, a contemporary, and that is With a Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. One of those books that I mentioned time and time again on my channel and I will continue to do because it just took my heart. This tells the story of a young teenage girl, Amani Santiago, and not only is she 
trying to figure out what to do with her life, but doing so while being a young teenage mother. And I just, it's difficult for me to analyze and explain why I love these books so much because sometimes it's not a thing of explaining, it's a thing of feeling. And all of these books on some level clicked with me, with my way of seeing the world, with my experiences, and I just, that's the vibe I get from it. This book clicked with me in a way that even though I have a completely different life experience from Amani, I saw myself a little bit in her. I definitely learned from her. And I just love everything this book had to say. Once again, the way it explored family, family dynamics. Elizabeth Acevedo as a writer is one of my favorites as well. Every book of hers that she has ever published, I've read, I've loved, and I cannot... It's one of those authors that I know I'll follow for the rest of my life because I, I love what she's doing. I love the stories she's telling. Like I mentioned before, 2020 was the year that I discovered, or not discovered, but decided to take a dive into the nonfiction genre. And this book has a little to do with it, but not all to do with it. This is Losing Eden, Why Our Minds Need the Wild by Lucy Jones. And it was just the perfect read at the perfect time. We're so used to recycle that idea that nature is important and we need to preserve the planet and take care of the planet and everything. But in a way, it feels like we're doing it for the planet's sake and not for our sake, if that makes sense. And this book really tells us, and whoever <laughs> reads it, how important nature is to us humans, to our lives, to our minds. If you are in some way disconnected from nature, this book really makes you want to revive that relationship. And that's what it did for me. I loved it so, so much. I learned so much from it. It talks a lot about obviously nature, but not only that, the way class and money and accessibility plays a part in our access to nature. And it was so, pertinent to read this at the time that I did. It's one of those that I will read for the rest of my life, reread for the rest of my life, and I can't recommend it enough. Moving on to something lighter. This is Get a Life, Chloe Brown, and this is Take a Hint, Danny Brown, both by Talia Hibbert. These are romance novels, and I love them. This book tells the story of Chloe Brown. A young woman who is at a point in her life that makes her reevaluate things, where she is, what she wants. So she makes a list in order to turn her life around and live a more fulfilled life. And this tells the story of those adventures, her finding love without planning for it, the way it is written, the way these characters feel so real, so lovable and just meant for each other. The other book is Take a Hint, Danny Brown, and this tells the story of Danny, a woman, a young woman once again, very much independent. She isn't looking for relationships, she isn't looking for love. She is looking for sex though, and to have a kind of friends with benefits kind of situation, nothing too serious, just physical. And then Zafir walks into her life and for one reason or another, they connect and they kind of help each other out. This book made me realize how I want other books to explore communication. Because these characters, especially Zafir, is so in tune with his feelings, with the way his mind works, the way that all of us have defense mechanisms, the way we kind of guard our hearts and put up walls. And he is so in tune with that in himself that he's able to recognize it in all the characters around him, especially Danny. And I love that so, so, so much. Both of these absolute favorites cannot recommend them enough. If you like romance, read them. If you are unsure about romance, read them, give these books a try. Next up, we have Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. And this is one of those books that I'm so 
grateful, so glad that I have in my life because not only is it a good book, a well-written book, the information and everything that I've learned from it is invaluable. It's one of those that everybody should read, everybody should take this information in and apply it to their lives. And I think the tagline says it wonderfully, notes from the women white feminists forgot. So this, obviously by the title, deals and talks about feminism, but intersectional feminism. Feminism in general tries to look at women through the same lens of all being women, but it shouldn't. There are different prejudices, there are different privileges, and this book really explores that. It should be mandatory reading. I loved it, I learned so much from it. Every page has something that I highlighted, underlined. I will, once again, forever take this book with me and I will be rereading it forever because it's one of those things that we all need to be reminded time and time again until things take a turn for the better. But that takes a lot of work, a lot of conscious work, not just sitting on our asses, waiting for things to change because they only do if we make them. Out of all the books that I'm going to mention here, if you don't pick up anything else, pick this up. Next up, we have Expectation by Anna Hope. And this book was a surprise because when I got this, I didn't know what it was about. Once I read the synopsis, I thought that maybe I wasn't really going to love it. But then I read it and it became a favorite, so take chances, take risks, because sometimes they pay off. That's the lesson here. This tells the story of three best friends, all in their 30s and going through very different stages of their lives. It deals with different challenges that women have to deal in their lives, especially when it comes to career, motherhood, especially motherhood is very much discussed in this book and how this affects each woman differently. I have to say that on top of those issues that I didn't realize I wanted to explore more, I really loved the way this book and this author delved into female relationships, female friendships, because sometimes they're not well explored, they're not well done, it seems petty, it seems unrealistic, and this felt so real and I loved it. It was one of the best explorations and depictions of female friendship. Another one that in a way kind of fits that bill of not expecting to love it as much as I did and taking me by surprise is The Sun and Her Flowers by Rupi Kaur. This is a collection of poems with Rupi Kaur. She focuses a lot on relationships. But here, it doesn't just focus on romantic relationships, it talks a lot about family. And I loved, loved that. She is from a family of immigrants, and that whole subject was so beautifully explored. I love that. I loved the commentary that she had. If you've read Milk and Honey and were unimpressed, give this one a go because it is definitely better and I, for me, I love this so much more. Moving on to some other fantasy. This is Bruja Born by Zoraida Cordova. This is the second book in her Brooklyn Brujas trilogy, if I'm not mistaken. This comes after Labyrinth Lost. And that series tells the story of three sisters. Each book focuses on one specific sister. This is Lula's book and I loved it so, so much. After reading Labyrinth Lost, I was intrigued about the story, but Labyrinth Lost felt more predictable. It is a story, it's a new story, but something that I feel like I've seen before. So going into this book, my expectations were okay. So the fact that this took a turn for the better and I was completely engrossed in the story, completely in love with the characters, what they were going through was a surprise and I'm so happy it happened because this book, the topics that it explores, the way it deals with grief, the way it deals with losing someone, what that 
makes you feel how our main characters deal with that the sacrifices they're willing to make everything about this book everything that it discussed and brought to light was so beautiful it was incredibly powerful to read this story we have the beautiful by renee Adier. this is a book this is more historical a more historical setting it takes place in 1872 new orleans and this book once again just took me by surprise because i was not expecting to love it as much as i did so if you know anything about this book you've probably heard that there are vampires but not really vampires and that is the best way that i can describe it there are vampires in the story but it's not about them this tells the story of celine she is a french girl who for reasons that you later discover in the book has to escape to a new country and she ends up in new orleans so united states it tells the story of her acclimating to a new way of life a new world some friends that she makes there i just loved this book so much once again i loved the characters absolutely loved the writing i cannot wait to read the second book i went into this expecting one thing and when i got another it was the best and most pleasant surprise i can see myself rereading this once again i think that is the best mark i can give a book that if i love it and i want to reread it that is the best compliment i can give it it means that i love it so much that i can see myself going back to it learning more from it and immersing myself in the story over and over again it's just the best compliment i can give it and i can see myself doing that with the beautiful and the last pile these are all more recent i read these in november and december next up we have the starless sea by aaron morgenstern and oh my god this book this tells the story of zachary ezra rawlings and he is our main character he is our way into the story he discovers a book that tells a little bit of his story but this book was written years and years ago way before he was born so obviously he is intrigued this book tells the story of his journey discovering why he is in the pages of that book what that means it's the most wonderful adventure about books and the love of books and magical people and characters it's just stunning from the first page i was in love with the writing and it's one of the most beautifully written books i've ever read once again i will be carrying this with me for the rest of my life you put the pieces together little by little and certain things click but if you read this a second time i'm sure way more things make sense earlier on and differently so i can't wait for that experience then i finally got to one of the books that i really needed to finish in 2020 and i'm so happy so proud that i did that is queen of air and darkness by cassandra clare the last book in the dark artifices series i also read lord of shadows for the first time this year i also loved that but comparing the two queen of air and darkness was everything to me <laughs> lord of shadows has a bit more angst has a bit more drama and this was so well balanced in my eyes it was perfect it was the perfect ending the perfect book we had action we had drama but we had so many heartfelt moments wholesome moments that it's why it's a favorite i love this book so so much this trilogy starts with Lady Midnight, so it's it's difficult to explain, especially because to read Lady Midnight, it makes sense for you to read all other Cassandra Clare books, <laughs> so it's difficult to explain. If you haven't picked up any Cassandra Clare book, please do, and be sure that the journey to Queen of Air and Darkness is a wonderful one. It'll break your heart. It'll put it back together and break it again and put it back together and it'll be wonderful this was such a worthy 
finale. I loved it so, so much. We have the second to last book, which is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by Phi Schwab. The, one of the most anticipated books of 2020 for me and one of the most wonderful, wonderful stories I have ever read and experienced. And one of those, like it's a book of a lifetime that I will just read over and over and over again until I'm old and gray, hopefully. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. You can see how much the author put into the story, how much dedication it took to write this book well. And the end result is everything you could ever ask for and more. It's beautiful, it's lovely. <sighs> I love this book so much. So this tells the story of Addie LaRue, a young French girl who is born around the end of the 17th century, if I'm not mistaken. She lives around there. And early on in her life, she understands and she realizes that she wants to live a full life, a life that at the time is not possible for her to live. So she makes a deal with a god in order to achieve that but obviously that deal has consequences and this book deals with that it's not really fantasy even though there are a little a bit of a magical element to it but it's very very mild this is a bit more historical but we also have present day and it's just the most wonderful story that i'm sure will grab you and won't let you go until the last page. The writing was beautiful, the story was beautiful. This has a lot of philosophical thinking behind it and you can tell the characters obviously have a lot of symbolism to them. They're not just people, they represent more than that. And it's a wonderful story of life and love, but especially life and art and everything that is important to live a full life, I loved it. I loved it so, so, so much. I feel like I learned a lot from this. And finally, we get to the last book of 2020, the last favorite of 2020, and that is Ghosts of the Shadow Market by a ton of different authors, Cassandra Clare, Sarah Rees Brennan, Maureen Johnson, Kelly Link, and Robin Wasserman. This is a collection of short stories, all of them taking place in the Shadowhunter world, the Shadowhunter Chronicles. This focuses specifically on Jem's point of view. So we see him through the years, and if you know, you know, we see him through the years at different points in his life, living different adventures. This connects with the events in the Dark Artifices trilogy. It also deals with things from the last hours and things before that in the middle. It's just there is a lot here and I know some people are a bit hesitant about these short story collections because they think it's just extra content and nothing really important really to understand those other series. And while they may not be completely necessary for you to understand, it's so much more gratifying reading those main series with this information in mind as well. This book was a delight to read. I love Jem as a character. I love the whole group of characters that surround him. If you need some convincing to read Cassandra Clare's short story collections, this is me telling you they are so worth it. Pick them up because they are incredible. And I can't talk too much about it because spoilers obviously but it was beautiful i loved it and i highly recommend that you pick them up and that's it for today i hope you enjoyed this video these are all my favorites and i'm so happy to share them with you please let me know in the comments what were your favorites of 2020 in all the categories that i mentioned movies tv shows books i'm always curious i always love to know and that's it for today i'll see you next time bye